everyone, you're sailing on Olive's Ark. I'm Taylor and this is Minnie, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to find the right vet for you. So in today's video, I guess we're doing this without dogs today. So the key phrase today is finding the right vet for you because honestly everybody as much as we all would like to think we're kind of on the same page and that there's one right way to do everything the people have different opinions people have different ways they want to treat their pets or the amount of money they want to spend on their pets people just have different things that they choose to believe when they read resources. So despite what other people may encourage you to do or recommend for you or even me on this channel, I want you to always be the responsible person for your animal. Um, that means you need to fact check whatever you read. You fact check me. Um, make sure that what I'm saying is something that aligns with what you believe. So I'm going to narrow it down to five things today that you can ask a vet when you are calling and considering them for your own pet. And not all of these things are really like moral issues. Sometimes it's just you know, a factor of do you offer a service or not, but these are things I want you to consider when choosing a vet. Most important, the five things, and that I'll elaborate on, is the type of medicine they practice, the type of feed they prefer for an animal, their thoughts on vaccines, how they handle surgeries, and the hours that they operate. So let's go down the list now one by one and talk about why they're important and what you need to think about and maybe what you should specifically ask them to get the right answer and then you can narrow it down to the vet you like best. So. What I did is if you're looking for a new vet, what I did to start is I went on Yelp and just other review sites and I just searched vets in the area. And I first started with just the reviews purely, regardless of how the vet answers my, my following questions. I just looked at reviews, I looked for vets that had really high ratings, people were very happy in general, that they liked the doctor, the doctor was personable, all of that stuff. And I narrowed it down to maybe five practices from there. I don't know why I like multiples of five. But, so I took all of the vets in the area and I narrowed it down to a good five. You may live in an area where you don't have that many to choose from and you only have five, or maybe you only have two, but that's fine. Um, in general, this is just an idea to get you narrowing down if you do have too many to choose from. I narrowed it down to five, and then what I did is I called each of those five and I asked them a set of questions, and this is what I asked them. So first I started with, what are your normal business hours? Do you have emergency hours? And are there any hours that are blocked out for things like surgery or other specialty visits? They answered how they answer, and like I said, this is why it's up to you to decide what do you want. And so I'm just gonna tell you what I wanted, just to give you a baseline, because I think I'm pretty strict with how I treat my dogs and where I take my dogs. I wanted hours that were generally pretty long throughout the day, and not just long necessarily, but more later in the day, because as a working person, um, often, you know, you don't get home until four or five and there's a lot of veterinary practice that close at that time So I was really looking for something that stayed open a little later Like maybe seven because that would give me a couple hours after work to actually take my dogs to the vet if need be And as well something that offered emergency hours or had a clinic that they worked with that offered the emergency services if they were closed and so uh, and that's just because in an emergency, it's an emergency. You don't want to have to prolong any pain your dog might be in or your cat or whatever animal it is. Honestly, this is this is for any animal. I don't know why I'm talking about dogs. Um, for your vet, you don't want to prolong your pet's pain just because um, your vet's not open, right? You want something that you can at least go to in an emergency. Okay, so the second thing I asked was, do you do in-house surgeries and who does them? For me personally, when I take my dog to a vet, when I choose a practice, I want the veterinarian that sees my dog to also be the veterinarian that does surgery on it, if it possibly needs surgery. There is some conflict on this. You might see it differently. You might say, well, I would rather have a vet that specializes in surgery to do the surgery, regardless of if they're the one that sees my dog. And that's true too. But for me, if I'm going to see a vet that can't even operate on my dog, it just makes me question on how skilled the vet actually is. And like I said, the practice I used to work at, the vet was able to do surgeries on the pets themselves, which just made me more comforted thinking that that vet knows what they're doing with the animal and knows how to treat an animal. Because if they can do the surgery, then they can do the, the regular patient, 
nurse type stuff too, right? And then if I do need some like outrageously specialty surgery and my vet can't do that, like maybe like an eye cut, like an optical surgery for the eyes, then of course not. Like I'm not expecting the vet to do everything. Numero three, and that's just how do you see medicine? What kind of vet are you? And what I mean by that is just like human doctors, um, just different types of doctors practice different types of medicine and some are very Western and what I mean by that it's it's probably the medicine that you're familiar with today and that's just very like man-made medication pills um, using a lot of machinery uh, scientific like sterilization that kind of thing Eastern medicine which is more of the traditional stuff of Let's try herbal supplements or physical therapies or find ways to comfort your dog in their daily life without using, you know, all this like chemical medicine junk. There's positives and negatives to both sides. And so in general, for me personally, I did look for a doctor that was well versed in the Western medicine. I at least want them to know what medications are, what they do, which ones are bad, which ones are good, how to be sterile, how to use anesthesia, like all that. I wanted a vet that was primarily strong in that, but a vet that was open-minded to the idea of Eastern holistic medicine. Because as someone who tries to like do organic things for my pet or just natural things, I think there's value to that. For example, if you haven't seen it yet, the video where I talked about Minnie having digestive problems and not using the bathroom regularly, I could have fed her a vet formulated diet which would have had like supplements and kibble and like dry bad junk in it. But I went a natural route and now I feed her a root powder that is just basically it's all fiber, but it's natural and she actually, the problem solved. The problem was solved and that was not Western medicine. Do you see what I mean? Number four is then the idea on vaccines. It's same with people. There's arguments for vaccines everywhere. Some vets are like, you must vaccinate for everything regardless of the situation. Other vets are like, we're only gonna vaccinate for what's necessary for your pet, Wh whatever it may be for that vaccine. My dogs do get vaccinated, but I don't want a vet that's gonna give my dog something just because it says to like in the book. I want them to fit what my dogs need or what my other pets might need. And lastly, a debate that's always had by people. But regardless of if you feed your dog this or not, I would still ask your vet about it. One, in case you change your mind. But also, it will tell you a lot about the vet's perspective on things, if they're flexible. And that is, how do they feel about feeding raw food or a raw diet? I did do that at one point. I don't anymore because it's not a fit for Olive. But um, I, I love raw food. I'm still a proponent for it. Um, if your dog can eat raw, feed them raw. Um, there's a lot that goes into it still, but I think raw diets are far superior to a kibble diet. Ask your vet how they feel about raw diets because this is gonna show you how flexible they are and how willing they are to listen to new information, okay? If your vet just shuts it down and is like, science diet all the way, forever dry kibble is the best thing you could feed your dog, Honestly, I, I don't like that. Even if you might agree with that, I don't like it because it shows the vets a little closed-minded and that they're not willing to read other resources or they don't really back themselves up. They're not explaining why they don't like raw or why the kibble's better. It just kind of sounds like something they, are, they heard and now are just repeating with no reason. If a vet says they don't like raw, but then gives you some reasons and, and some advice and some cases they've seen, I'm actually liking that better because even though they don't like raw, even though it's different from mine, they're at least showing that they've researched it and that they gave it a chance and they tried. I'd rather have a vet who tries than who doesn't. And that's how you find your vet. Cause honestly, once you ask those five questions, one of those vets is gonna kind of stand out to you and you're like, I really liked that one. They took the time to talk to me. They answered all my questions. They answered them how I liked them to. So one's gonna stand out. That's the vet you're gonna pick. Okay, that's that's that simple. I hope that helped you guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I put out a lot of pet videos um, and they're all educational and they're all meant to help you care for your animals, whether it's a reptile, a small and furry thing, or a big and fuzzy dog or whatever it may be. Uh, my videos are here to help you. Leave a comment of other questions you asked when you found your vet. So I'm curious to see. Uh, comment below. What have you asked a vet to see if they were the right fit for you? 
And then lastly, like this video, and I will see you next Friday for the next video. So see ya, have a great week.